It's Barely News, a series of short stories that were not, were almost not newsworthy, but we thought you'd like to hear about anyway. We don't have a whole lot to say about them. <laughs> That's true. We don't have a whole lot to say about them. First right. up, we want to let you know that uh, if you've got a jumper T12, uh, you can use the same uh, gimbals that are in the T12 and T12, or you can use the same gimbals that are for the AGO ones that are for the uh, TX12. Zorro. And the Zorro. Oh, yeah, the Minis. And the Zorro. Okay. Yeah, so those Minis you can now use uh, with the T12. So we want to let you know those fit in there. So, yeah. Mm, better jumper, better gimbals for the jumper. They just drop in? Just a straight I drop I believe in? they just drop in. Yeah, I don't think there's any print for these. Brilliant. Nice. Yeah, no, it looks like they just drop in. Those are definitely very, very nice gimbals. And uh, probably better than the gimbals, the stock gimbals on the Jumper T12, although they're not terrible. Um, oh, they're certainly better, but yeah, I don't know how much better. Yeah. Okay. That's good right. to know. Thanks to, uh, who was it that pointed that out? Who was it? Which channel was that? Thanks to 3D printed drones for uh, for figuring this out and making it, uh, making us aware of it. Oh, yeah. Mark Rober. Like to hear about him. Yeah. yeah. Next up, we've got a story from Mark Rober. Uh, Mark Rober has done his new glitter bomb, his final glitter bomb video, 5.0. I got to say, I think this was probably the worst video he's made so far. The glitter bomb series. Oh, uh, no. Maybe people are maybe people are catching on. But one thing that's special about this one, why we're showing you this one, uh, is Ooh, that it, it drones uses, behind him. He uses drones in the glitter bomb. <laughs> uh, so in addition to the other changes he's made, people might not know, but basically he puts fake packages out on the porches and in cars and attempts to get people to take these packages illegally. And then when they take the packages, they find out it's a glitter bomb and a stink spray and basically ruins their house and gets some glitter everywhere. And, uh, it gets the Which is all fair back. game because they're thieves. That's true, yeah. And but one anybody... of the things this one does is uh, it has drones, and the drones carry the the glitter, and then they fly off and they just lay glitter all over your house. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, should we spoil the video by just showing showing it happening? Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't think he'll strike yeah. us, but I don't think Mark Rober would strike us. Oh, I don't know where in the we don't have a timestamp to when the you know the magic happens. People can go watch yeah. it. Yeah, we just wanted it. to let you know that was that was happening. Yeah. So yeah, okay, all right. Well, uh, Mark Rober's worst glitter bomb video ever still got 14 million views in four days. So shut. Well, it's the... always going to get the views. It's always going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Next up. Next up. Uh, the Army Rangers has announced they are using uh, Skydio quadcopters uh, in the field. Uh, um, but not, not regular old Skydios that you could buy. That's correct. Yeah, the, they have a Skydio RQ-28A, uh, which is their version of a fighting drone. But it might look familiar because it, it kind of looks like a carbon quadcopter. It does. You know? We only got this one uh, picture, huh? Yeah, pretty much. There's a couple others around the internet, but that, there's not many good ones. Uh, yeah, well, it's top secret. Uh, yeah. But this is uh, basically their first one they've ever announced, like, officially using. So they're going to be training with it now uh, in their training uh, stuff and, and trying to use it in the field to uh, to do tasks and stuff. So it's pretty cool. I think this is the first we've seen of, a, of it officially used, at least for the Army Rangers. Uh, this is their first one. So they're looking yeah. for about 500 of these. Um, with a thousand by the end of March 2025. So, uh, yeah, pretty good for Skydio and pretty interesting for the military. Yeah, the military uh, definitely people are looking for alternatives to DJI drones uh, because they're being told they're not allowed to use them uh, in, in the DoD and in the, in the federal government specifically. Uh, and they, you know, definitely were using them. They're super useful, and people were just using them all over the place. And now there's a big opportunity for non china based drone manufacturers like skydio i'm sure red cat and teal are hoping to pick up some of this action but i guess they didn't make this one uh well they are i think they're still in line for the tranche it's literally just teal and skydio as far as i know in tranche two so i think they're both giving like uh stuff to uh military to test right now mm. um, interesting uh, they uh, Timberline in the chat points out, and the, also the article points out, it's very similar to Skydio's X2D consumer drone, mm -hmm. uh, which just looks like some tweaks for the military. 
yeah, the military tweaks are uh, that it costs four times as much. That's it. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, it sure seems like uh, this should be good. Like for the, the, the DJI ban uh, for the federal government, not not a general DJI ban, but for the federal government and the military specifically, should be good for Teal and Skydio. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah. Why is Red Cat's stock so bad right now? I mean, they sold off their revenue. So unless Teal starts selling some drones, I think they're not making any money. That would be my guess. I don't know that much about what, what's actually going on. But from the outside view, uh, the people who are taking any on the books revenue are gone. So, Right, because they, they sold off Fat Shark and Rotor Riot. I guess Liftoff yeah. makes some revenue. Shouldn't write that. Yeah, off. but they I were... bet it's like pennies compared to Rotor Riot. You know, Rotor sure. it's like six six mil a, a, a year or something like that. Yeah. So that's money. You know, when you when you've got fifty sixty million sitting there like an investment, and you're trying to show something, I think showing that six mil revenue and then the couple mil revenue from Fat Truck or whatever they were showing is like eight mil versus zero. Right, like eight mil versus half a mil, or whatever the on the books was. I don't even know if they've done a revenue report since then, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, to me, that would be my fear about it. Is if Teal doesn't sell the drones, they've just dumped money into something that's nothing, you know. So. But they have to. I mean, who else is a drone manufacturer? Th well, Skydio won States. the Tranche One, so it's possible that okay. Skydio will just continue to win only Tranche Two, and then it'll be done, right? But I mean, like, that's they're the not thing. gonna. Hmm. Like okay. Skydio could get all the contracts. So I think part of what Teal is trying to do is position themselves so they can make so many and they could so easily that they can pitch to them that like, hey, you don't have to wait till 2025 to get a thousand. We can give you a thousand in, you know, uh, six months. I, you know, that seems to be their their play. But right now, I don't know that that's the case. So, man, um, there there is a blue SUAS list uh, that shows you uh, who is on it and cleared. So right now. Uh, that is Harris Aerial, Easy Aerial, Inspired Flight, Blue Halo, Wing Truck, never, never Free Fly Systems, Ascent Aero Systems, and uh, Sense Fly by Ag Eagle. So those are all the like the names you've never heard of that are also making Free Fly. The heard. They make the Alta. Uh, Daniel That's Riley true, works yes. there. That's the, only the Alta X is are. the one that got added to the Blue SUS. So. Oh man, the Alta is a blast. I got to fly an Alta. We did a road ride episode out there. That's a Alta's blast. how I got into drones because they were carrying gates under the Alta. That was the first video I ever saw. Oh, nice! I rem that's yeah. the video I'm talking about. We put oh, a gates okay. under the Alta, yeah. and we oh, yeah, and we power looped the Alta. It's nothing like nice. power looping a fifteen thousand dollar thirty six inch prop. Yeah, whatever. Probably that was the. 36. I was watching other stuff, and then I got into is it RC Test Flight who does the Alta, or is yeah. it? Um, it's yeah. Daniel Riley, RC Test Flight. He works yeah, there. so so I was watching other RC test flight stuff, and it wove me into that video, and that's how I got into FPV. The the, the you're saying that the RC test flight Rotorite collab was how you got into drones. We wouldn't be here right now. That's yes. amazing. You that's amazing. pitched me that collab because I was watching RC test flight stuff. That's amazing. The the connections yeah. in the world. You didn't think we were going to finish this whole broadcast without doing a <laughs> meme, did you? <laughs> Thank you, Black Jungle, for the memes. Uh, all right. Uh, we got uh, got a it's, couple it's more fun, funny games. and accurate. Yeah. Cosmo Streamer. What is Cosmo Streamer, Blunty? Uh, Cosmo Streamer is a way online uh, or basically a program that you can download uh, and use from this website, CosmoStreamer.com, that lets you use a bunch of different program or a bunch of different hardware and stream it. Um, and one of the things you can do is use the DJI goggles with a free app. And now they've added support for the goggles too. So if you've got the goggles too, you can now use Cosmo Streamer with the goggles too. So we wanted to let you know about that. So this is a way of getting basically video out of the goggles too, other than the DJI Fly app, which Correct. has some drawbacks. Um, uh, and I does think this... the other way you can do it is with the DJI RC Pro. That's what I'm I being believe. told. The DJI yeah. RC Pro controller can connect to the goggles too. The DJI yeah. Smart controller can connect to the V2 goggles. Uh, yeah. couldn't couldn't make it be the same one, no. Uh, but Cosmo Streamer can do them both, and if Cosmo Streamer can do it, does that mean we can expect that like FPV out, wide FPV, Digiview, all those other apps that use that interface will be getting into? 
I'd assume so, um, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, my guess would be, since there is an avenue, we, we would probably see the other apps get the same thing. So Okay. Yeah, this is video out, not video in. It's yeah. basically a way you can stream the feed from your goggles to an external display or to the internet. Um, great. All uh, right. We got Next a up, monocopter. But- yeah, we've got a monocopter. So uh, we were sent this by a few different people. Uh, this guy has built a 3D printed monocopter. So if you want a cool project to do, I think this is definitely on the list. So I don't think he's published the code for his flight controller. It, uh, it has a basic. It's a wing. That's correct. With one propeller offset. Does he know that airplanes exist? If you just move that motor over here to the center, <laughs> you'll have an airplane. And then why did you do this, sir? Well, uh, yeah, so it's a one motor and a servo. Uh, okay. And that servo controls a flap to keep it uh, controllable in flight. Uh, I think he did it because it's cool. That would be my It is Okay, okay. In the chat, he's about to fly it. What is it going to do when he lets go? <laughs> what do you think it's going to do? Tell, him the, tell me in the chat. Uh, ah! <laughs> oh, that's the most dangerous launch I've ever seen. <laughs> and damn it, look at Oh, that's the perfect freeze frame. It's coming for your face. <laughs> uh, get away from it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> and now he's controlling it, right, Plenty? He's this is not just yeah. wildly flying to the sky. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, he does have some control over it. So uh, that's kind of the yeah, that's the idea behind it is where <laughs> he's got it set up with a flight controller so he can uh, try to get it somewhat stable in flight. And in this video, he's testing uh, I think five inch versus six inch props <laughs> to see like how the angle of flight changes with the thrust and stuff. So. Wow. Well, that's sketchy as hell. Uh, <laughs> I'll never get tired. He's gonna lose his face. This is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Why don't you launch it facing away from you, sir? Ah! Oh God, <laughs> this is not safe. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Oh, that's working better though. It looks more stable. You gotta figure out a better way to launch this. I want to. Is he gonna do it again? Oh man. I think it's just these two because he was testing two different prop types. Oh, that looks way more stable, though. Yeah, I think that's a six-inch prop. It gives it a little more level flight. Mm. Wow. Oh, that's a good point, Chris Thorny says. It's facing every direction. There is no away from you. That's a good point. You need, like, a a launch stand. There's a distance away from you. Yeah, exactly. I I think, yeah. I don't think that. That doesn't feel. Listen, listen. Do you, th- do you think as you could as... throw it like a like a like yeah, a frisbee that, and then yeah, lo- yeah exactly? Yeah. As soon as you throttle up and let go, it's immediately going to whip around and try and catch your hand. So, good luck. Yeah, you got to chuck it. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Um, all right, that's that. That was worth it. Mm. Yeah. What's next? All right. Next up, we've got the Black Knight Transformer. Oh, I like the sound of that already. Uh, yeah. So okay. the Black Knight Transformer is a rotorcraft and uh, essentially like a Jeep in one. Uh, definitely an odd concept, I think. Uh, is here, there video? But, yeah. Uh, there's not video of it actually oh, in, in flight. Uh, it seems to be just mainly under test and development uh, through pictures and stuff. But okay. uh, I thought this kind of looked ridiculous, so I wanted to share it. Yeah, okay. It's a rotable VTOL. I could see, you know, I could see some uses for this. I could see Maybe. some uses for this. Yeah. I feel like, what is it going to do that a helicopter's not, I guess, drive on well, the ground? But then how many times are you going to need to do that? And like, yeah, I, I mean, don't know. It can, it's interesting. It can go small places. where The small props, you know, we always have this discussion whenever we talk about you know, air taxis and so forth. Like, why not just use a helicopter? Yeah. And there's all the advantage. You're usually the one who argues with me and I says, think, well, they're mechanically well, think, simpler. In this case, I think maybe that might not be true. Like, like if you're the military, you don't have a limit of money. Like, so 
And then you, I don't know. When I think about defense spending, I think like we don't care about price. And when I think about like air taxi and like costs, like when we talked about like drones versus helicopters, one thing we talked about was fuel costs. This is not going to be any better fuel cost. Or if it is, it's not going to be like, I don't know. Like, what are you gaining? Right? Yeah. Well, so, I don't know. They're gonna, I'm don't sure know. they have a salesman who would like to tell you the answer to that question. I guess we'll uh, see we if got, we see these on the battlefield. We got one more, Blunty. We always like stories of people doing good, helpful, positive things in the world with uh, drones. Uh, and this one is a two-year-old two-year-old located in the woods by a drone yeah uh yeah we like to let you know about these wholesome stories to end the show sometimes and uh yeah one of them was a missing toddler who they were able to locate um yeah through through thermal cameras so that's pretty fortunate that they were able to to get get them found that's the toddler right there yeah that's correct well you don't leave your toddler out in the snow i think is the moral of this story yeah i think they uh they went for a crawl slash uh, walkabout there, and uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, thermal, yeah. Uh, thermal, the perfect thing for finding a human in the winter, right? Very true. Very nice. Uh, would cool. have been a better story if they'd brought him a sausage, but I guess I can, I can forgive it. 